Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is 4G LTE, that is fourth generation long term evaluation. Compared to earlier generation, especially compared to the third generation technology, it gives increased speed and increased network capacity. So we'll uh, discuss the 4G LTE uh, in detail uh, as far as this session is concerned. But before starting the session, you should know uh, an important question from the exam point of view. That is comparison between different mobile radio standards. Mobile technology started earlier in 1970s and we know that day by day it is getting improved. So there are different generations. First generation, second generation, third, fourth and now we are in fifth generation. So this table, as I said, it is most important part. This table gives you summary of comparison. Uh, as far as different parameters and different generations are concerned. As I have told you, these important parameters I have shortlisted and made a summarized table. So, first parameter is implemented year. First G, 1984, then 1991, second G, third G, 2002, fourth G, 2010, and fifth G in 2015. Technology used for first generation, it was the basic technology which was analog cellular technology. For second generation, it was digital cellular technology. Third generation, it is wideband CDMA, code division multiple access. Then uh, fourth generation, this was about third generation. Fourth generation, LTE, long term evaluation and WiMAX. And fifth generation, uh, 5G LTE. Then data rates, this is important parameter. Data rates for first generation was 2.4 kbps, which was very uh, low as compared to the today's data rate. Second generation 14.4 kbps. Third generation it was improved lot 3.1 megabits per second. Fourth generation again there was a lot of increment 100 mbps and fifth generation we expect it should be greater than 1 gigabits bytes per uh, second 1 gbps. Different services offered by different uh, generations in first generation, only voice service was offered. In second generation, along with voice, people were in a position to make use of SMS. Then third generation, high quality voice and data services. Fourth generation, enhanced or advanced, you can say, audio video streaming technology, then HD mobile TV and so on. And fifth generation, dynamic information access, then variable devices with artificial intelligence, that is AI. <clears throat> Next parameter of consideration is multiple access. For, for, for G, it is FDMA, frequency division multiple access. Then for second G, TDMA and CDMA, time division multiple access and uh, code division multiple access. For third, it is wideband CDMA. Fourth and fifth, it is CDMA. Disadvantages. You should know disadvantages of each and every generation. First generation, since it was a basic generation, so poor voice quality was there, then network was having low capacity and unreliable handoff process. We have already studied the handoff process in uh, previous lectures. Second generation drawbacks, video signals were not supported, only audio signals were supported and limited, there was limited internet browsing. Third generation, new handsets were required and half there was a high power consumption as far as battery was concerned. So it was required to use the battery which is having very uh, high power rating. Fourth generation expensive data services, uh, expensive data services and new in infrastructure changes. Fifth generation, we know that practical implementation is still abated in case of fifth generation. The next important part is LTE network architecture. This is the simplified diagram which use architecture of LTE network. An important part is EPC that is Evolved Packet Core which is used to communicate with the outside world like IP, multimedia, then internet and so on. Uh, I have used short form to draw this diagram. So here S1 to S11 and X2 are acting as an interface. Then I have written the meaning of each and every term. UE, this term, is user equipment. ENB is evolved node B. This is ENB, evolved node B. Then MME, mobile management entity, this which is the part of EPC. Then SGW, this block, 
एस जी डब्ल्यू और पी जी डब्ल्यू एस जी डब्ल्यू इज सर्विंग गेट वे पी जी डब्ल्यू इज पी डी एन गेट वे पी डी एन इज पैकेट डेटा नेटवर्क ई पी सी जस्ट नो आई टोल्ड यू इट इज इवॉल्ड पैकेट कोर एंड एस जी एस एन दिस ब्लॉक इज सर्विंग जी पी आर एस सपोर्ट नोड नाउ वील डिस्कस द मीनिंग ऑफ इच एंड एवरी ब्लॉक इन डिटेल ये पूरा आर्किटेक्चर डिकम्पोज किया है अलग अलग पार्ट में एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से अगर शॉर्ट नोट आता है एक्सप्लेनेशन आता है यू नीड टू ड्रॉ दिस डायग्राम देन यू नीड टू राइट द मीनिंग ऑफ इच एंड एवरी नोटेशन यूज इन डायग्राम एंड यू नीड टू राइट द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ इच थिंग इन शॉर्ट सो वील डिस्कस द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ इच एंड एवरी पार्ट ऑफ दिस आर्किटेक्चर फर्स्ट पार्ट इज यू ई यू ई इज यूजर इक्विपमेंट एज द नेम इंडिकेट्स यूजर इक्विपमेंट इज an equipment which is responsible to cause communication between the base station in the earlier videos we have discussed uh, about uh, the base station base station is an integral part of e and b where e and b is evolved node b up uh, in case of ue that is user equipment the first part is me that is mobile equipment मोबाइल इक्विपमेंट मतलब हम लोग सिंपल लैंग्वेज में बोलेंगे हैंडसेट व्हिच इज द मेन पार्ट व्हिच इज क्रिएटिंग द कम्युनिकेशन मोबाइल इक्विपमेंट में भी दो सब टाइप्स है सब पार्ट है फर्स्ट इज टर्मिनल इक्विपमेंट एंड सेकंड इज मोबाइल टर्मिनेशन सो टर्मिनल इक्विपमेंट एज द नेम इंडिकेट्स इट टर्मिनेट्स द डेटा स्ट्रीम एम हैंडल्स ऑल कम्युनिकेशन फंक्शन देन नेक्स्ट ब्लॉक ऑफ यू दैट इज user equipment is u sim it is universal sim i hope everyone is aware of sim sim is subscriber identity model basically sim stores the user related information means it stores the user's phone number then home network for that particular user as well as it contains some security related alert information all these informations are in and are in embedded form which is in the form of sim card next block is enb that is evolved node b the most important integral part of enb is bs matlab base station dekho 4g lte mein ek mobile ek waqt ek hi base station ko connect rahega and it will be also connected to only one uh, sim that is the characteristics of this 4g lte now as i said it consists of a base station the base station which is a uh, presently in active condition or it is uh, uh, causing communication with a particular mobile is called as serving base station now this enb is connected to epc by using interface s1 and it is connected to other enb by using another interface that is x2 i have made a list of uh, functions that is done by this base station first is radio resource management for uplink and downlink second ip header compression third data routing routing of data uh, routing of user data rather then data encryption again it is related to the user data then selection of mme that is select a particular mobile management entity this block next broadcasting and scheduling of the calls next part is epc that is evolved packet core actually this epc consists of three major parts first is hss which is not uh, shown in this diagram so i am talking about hss that is home server system uh, then it consists of mme that is mobile management entity and sgw that is serving gateway and pgw that is pdn gateway the major functions uh, done by this epc are first charging of subscribers then subscriber management then policy control of user data flow that means it it basically helps to control the data flow providing quality of service and connection with the external servers now i have listed out some important points related to all blocks which are inside the epc you want a packet core we have discussed while uh, talking about the architecture so first block is mme that is mobile management entity so functions of mme are signaling and security control i mean it manages all the signaling activities and security control activities then tracking area management 
and roaming and authentication. This is an important function done by the MME. Then SGW, that is Serving Gateway. It controls ENB handovers. We have already discussed the concept of handover in detail in earlier videos. Then packet data route, routing, billing activities, all billing activities are uh, controlled by this uh, uh, servicing uh, gateway, serving gate, Q QOS, that is quality of uh, uh, service. Then PDN gateway, that is PGW, it basically allocates the IP addresses and it provides the two-way communication, that means it, uh, it activates the routing packets to and fro uh, PDN, that is packet data network. Then HSS, that is home subscriber service. It basically uh, contains collection of database uh, related to the all subscribers. So dear students, that's it for today's session. In the next session, we'll discuss the advanced poor GLT and advantages of this poor GLT. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.